so we'll start the session now uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen i'm ravi gotwal from church gate partners and on behalf of india mart intermesh limited i would like to welcome you all to the company q1 fy23 earnings webinar as a reminder all participant line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question once the presentation concludes joining us today from the management side we have mr dinesh agarwal managing director and chief executive officer mr brijesh agarwal whole time director mr prateek chandra chief financial officer and mr kushal maheshwari head of investor relations before we begin i would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's webinar may be forward looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties kindly refer to slide number 3 of the earnings presentation for the detailed disclaimer now i would like hand to hand over the call to mr dinesh agarwal for his opening remarks thank you and over to you sir thank you ravi hi good evening everybody and welcome to india mart's q1 fy23 earnings webinar we have already circulated our earnings presentation which is available on our website as well as uh, the website of stock exchanges i'm sure you would have gone through the presentation and i would be happy to take any questions after words <clears throat> and please to report that india mart has delivered a consolidated collection from customers of rupees 254 crore and revenue from operations of rupees 225 crores this quarter consolidated deferred revenue increased to rupees 961 crores and paying subscription suppliers increased to 179000 uh, representing a net addition of 10000 in this quarter these numbers also include uh, rupees 10.5 crores revenue and rupees 25 crores of deferred revenue from busy infotech business as the acquisition has been completed in this particular quarter sorry to interrupt mr dinesh yeah, you can speak a little bit louder or closer to yeah. the mic yeah thank you okay in the india mart business growth in the revenue collections and deferred revenue was primarily driven by improving macro economy as well as the result of recent growth investments we have made in products sales and servicing and building the organization we will continue to make the these investments as needed to maintain the growth momentum total traffic on the platform and resulting unique business inquiries remain stable at 257 million and 22 million respectively our 90 day repeat buyers stands at approximately 54% which represents the continued trust on the platform total business inquiries delivered stood at 115 million for the quarter as we discussed in the previous earning call the reduction in the total business inquiry is an outcome of certain algorithmic changes to increase the efficiency for matchmaking and improve the relevancy of our app being delivered to the users During the quarter, we have completed the acquisition of Busy Infotech as well as uh, 100% uh, acquisition of Busy Infotech and 51% of, <coughs> of the Light TV, resulting into the addition of accounting software segment in addition to the existing India Mart web services business. We have done segmental reporting also uh, from now on, and I am extremely positive about the scaling of this particular segment over the years leading to the. augmentation of new revenue streams uh, at india mart overall i believe we have started off the new fiscal year on a positive note on all performance indicator and we will remain committed to enhance our value proposition and deliver value to the customers which will help consolidate our leadership position in the industry now i will hand over the call to mr prajesh to discuss a uh, little bit more details about busy infotech thank you and over to you prajesh Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the busy transaction was consummated on sixth of April, um, and uh, since then, uh, busy now is a wholly owned subsidiary of India Mart. And being a subsidiary, uh, we shifted uh, the accounting standards from IGAP to IDAS uh, for reporting the financials uh, right from this quarter onwards. In this quarter, uh, we delivered a billing of uh, rupees thirteen crores. and the revenue from operations uh, of 10.5 crores uh, please note that because of this change uh, to indias uh, the uh, revenue pnl these numbers may not be comparable 
with the previous periods. Uh, Busy also sold about 9,000 uh, new licenses in this quarter, taking the overall licenses sold to about 3.11 lakhs. Uh, this being the first quarter uh, of acquisition, our focus in Q1 essentially was to assimilate people, uh, partners, and bringing the financial systems at par uh, with the reporting standards that we follow here at India Mart. I think we've made very good progress uh, on all of these three counts. Now, over the next two quarters, we would uh, start focusing on expanding the team, uh, expanding the uh, partner network, and improve our penetration in those areas where uh, it is still very underpenetrated. Uh, we hope that uh, the, the next two quarters, uh, once the focus gets on these elements, we should be able to uh, continue to build on the growth momentum that we've achieved in Q1. Now with this, I'll hand over the call to Prati uh, so that he can discuss the financial performance. Thank you, Rajesh, and good evening, everyone. I will take you through the financial performance for the quarter ended June 2022. Consolidated revenue from operations was rupees 225 crores in this quarter, a growth of 24% year on year, primarily due to 23% increase in paying subscription suppliers, as well as addition of rupees 10.5 crores from the accounting software segment. On a like to like basis, standalone collections from customers, revenue from operations, and deferred revenue were at rupees 241 crores, 213 crores, and 935 crores representing a year-on-year -year growth of 42%, 18%, and 31% respectively. The company continued making growth investments in increasing manpower across functions, leading to an addition of 163 new employees in this quarter, taking total employee headcount to 38.35. Consolidated EBITDA for the quarter stood at 29%. We recorded significant decline in other income from rupees 30 crores previous quarter, to rupees 1 crore this quarter, primarily due to mark to market losses on treasury portfolio owing to significant increase in bond yields during the quarter. As most of our treasury investments are in high grade securities and have been done with the perspective of holding 2 to 3 years, we believe that this notional loss will reverse in its due course. As a result, net profit for the quarter stood at 47 crores with a margin of 21%. Cash generated from operations during the quarter was rupees 75 crores. During the quarter, in addition to cash generated from operations, we have utilized cash in making payments for busy and finlight acquisitions, as well as completing rupees 100 crore share buyback and resultant tax and expense of rupees 25 crores. As a result, consolidated cash balance stood at 1882 crores as of 30th of June 2022. Thank you very much. We are now ready to take any questions. Thank you, Pratik. We will now begin the Q&A session. Please allow camera and microphone access if you wish to ask questions once they are uh, available on your uh, uh, screen. Right. You may type your question in the discussion panel and we will revert to you if any question remain unanswered. Please restrict to two questions so that we may be able to address questions from all the participants. We will wait for a couple of seconds while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Vivekanand Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, uh, first question is, uh, could you help us understand your distribution model now? Uh, how much of the new customer addition is happening via channel partners versus your own employees? And uh, why is the outsourced sales cost uh, still rising uh, despite a QOQ decline in collections? Second question is on the competition. Uh, we are seeing competition from two areas. One is the new age B2B marketplaces like Zetworth, Mooglex, or even uh, large corporate groups like LNT and Grasim. And secondly, the government is talking about its own ONDC marketplace. So, uh, uh, Dinesh, she just wanted to understand, is it fair to uh, uh, assess that India Mart is focused mostly on SMEs at both ends, which is buyers and suppliers, whereas most of the peers are focused on large enterprise buyers? Thank you.
thank you uh, on the new uh, channel versus cell uh, i think the channel has has been developed over a period of uh, last 18 months or so and we continue to invest behind channel development currently uh, i think new players acquisition is slowly and slowly moving towards sorry can you mute yourself please yeah. slowly and slowly approaching towards half and half so uh, half of them are coming from uh, the people who are uh, uh, completely managed by india mart uh, they are still on a uh, different uh, third party uh, payrolls and the second part is the uh, channel so half half is started to come from channel Uh, on your question, why the channel cost is still increasing versus the collection from the last quarter? So collection from the last quarter uh, is Q4 quarter. Q4 most of our collection comes from existing customers. However, the channel is deployed to for the new customer acquisition. So if you see, uh, <coughs> channel cost will uh, probably start to uh, stabilize. Uh, in some quarter or so, but for, for now, collection and uh, channel cost are not uh, related to each other in a direct manner uh, for now. On, on the competition segment, to some extent, you are right uh, that we are uh, more of a marketplace. We are more of a network effect business uh, where buyer and supplier both come, and many of the names that you took uh, are. typically focusing on uh, trading of goods rather than uh, you know rather than match making and uh, network effect so to that extent we are very different however uh, by after match making also the uh, you know buyers and suppliers transact with each other so that from that perspective we are similar and none of them are actually uh, solving full discovery issue so currently if you look at uh, uh, whether it is price discovery product discovery model discovery uh, supply discovery uh, i think uh, there is no better platform than the amazon uh, with the uh, 70 lakhs suppliers and about eight crore product sorry dinesh there is some disturbance uh, from your side uh, if you could just repeat that yeah so this product platform like amazon is all the discovery piece as good as uh, So whether it is 7.2 million suppliers or whether it is 86 million products, uh, we get uh, a wide variety of the products and suppliers on India Mart platform. So in that respect, I think we continue to do perform better uh, year on year uh, over any other platform that you can see right now. This is very helpful, sir. Just uh, small follow up. so one is on on the uh, inbound you know your own employees acquiring new customers versus channel partners so um, uh, last i remember i think you had said that around 500 of your own employees were also acquiring uh, customers uh, is that number similar or is that come down now um, secondly on on the uh, uh, explanation you gave on competition Uh, just wanted your thoughts on the government's uh, ONDC marketplace because that comes up for discussion very often. So, on the uh, employee side, uh, you know, the, the 500 people that you see on the new customer acquisition, they are sales supervision people. So, they are the managers who are overseeing the channel. They are managers who are overseeing the branches. So, those are the people on the uh, uh, India Mart payroll. And rest everybody is uh, on uh, channel and other uh, third party. On the ONDC, it is something as a concept evolving and very early. And as and when uh, you know more clarity will emerge, uh, we will we will try and see where, where to collaborate and where to compete. But I think it will be more of a collaboration if at all it becomes positive. So and it is mostly for B two C consumers. For B two B consumers, uh, I think it is still maybe five years away after we become successful on B two C side. Uh, 
Great, thank you. Appreciate. Just a minute, Ravi, are we properly audible? Now you are audible. There was some disturbance in between, but I think it's uh, all clear now. Thank you. Let's proceed. So next question is from the line of Abhishek Bandari from Nomura. Abhishek, go ahead with your question. So sorry, Abhishek, we cannot hear you. Please unmute yourself. No, no, still we can't hear you. We can see you, but we can't hear you. So we can move on to the next participant, uh, Pranav from Edelweiss. Pranav, please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is regarding the cost. Uh, you know, the cost uh, we typically used to see some decline uh, in Q1 from Q4, uh, but this quarter there was an increase. Uh, so how should we see in the next couple of quarters cost going uh, uh, up? Uh, so uh, that's my first question. Uh, and secondly, if I look at two factors, one is the unique business inquiries and traffic uh, that has sort of plateaued and sort of started decline. Can you give me some more color on, uh, you know, uh, what is happening uh, if there are any cuts uh, which are actually leading to, uh, uh, you know, uh, decline or, or uh, you know, how is the underlying traffic behaving? So let me uh, address the second part uh, and then uh, I will hand over to Pratik for the first part. So on the uh, traffic and unique business inquiries, they have stabilized. I don't think that uh, there is one, two percent decline uh, is a, a very mean. And uh, thankfully, it is, but uh, if you look at the segment, that's right. Uh, what had happened is a lot of uh, stress uh, items were, were in demand during the COVID. Uh, times. Uh, thankfully, there are, uh, I mean, whether it is masks, whether it is sanitizer, whether it is uh, medical equipment, whether it is medicine, uh, a lot of that demand has uh, you know, waned away. The, the other part is that, uh, you know, in the, especially in the month of April, uh, in the post GFM quarter, there has been a huge uh, price rise. Uh, in various commodities, and that uh, probably led to uh, some tapering of demands. And but this is this is very seasonal. I guess uh, uh, we should not have any much worried on uh, on those side. Uh, we should be fine on the buyer side. Uh, from pre-COVID levels, we are up uh, almost 33 to 40 percent on the buyer uh, KPI. Uh, if we can maintain these uh, for next couple of quarter and then start to grow slowly at uh, 10 to 20% per annum. That should be fine. But if you want to add the, uh, how the people try and cost. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Pranav, as I've already uh, spoken about, uh, we continue to invest behind growth and uh, therefore uh, have also added manpower in this quarter. So, almost 163 new employees have been added. Because of which, if you see the total manpower cost, of the solid manpower cost, it was 87 crores last quarter, has moved to 93 crores, uh, of which like 2 crores is on account of this increase and resume is on account of addition of the accounting and uh, uh, software vertical into the business. Other than that, uh, the cost have been going up largely in line with uh, the customer additions, whether it is the hosting of the uh, new customers, so all the uh, volume link costs. Overall, uh, for the going forward, uh, what we foresee is uh, that cost will increase pretty much in line with the, uh, the revenues, and we expect to maintain similar 28 to 30 cent investment. Sorry to interrupt, Pratik, once again. Yeah, the audio is not very clear, it's breaking up. So can you just double check connectivity at your end? It's uh, is it good? Sure. So, uh, Ravi, should I repeat the answer again, or uh, you could hear only the part of that what I spoke? So 
I think we heard half of it. So if you could just repeat last couple of uh, lines. Just a minute, uh, Ravi. Let us check the connection once again. Yes, please. Yeah. Just give us a minute. Sure. So let me just repeat the <coughs> answer uh, to your question on the cost. What I was explaining about uh, the cost was the last quarter. We had a total cost of 144 crores, which increased 160 crores in this quarter. And finally, if you see the uh, of the cost of manpower, increased from 87 crore last quarter to 93 crores this quarter. Of which uh, almost uh, four crores has been on account of addition of accounting and software vertical, and the other is because of uh, the normal increase in the uh, manpower of close to 160 or people in this quarter which we will have it. So we we'll continue to make these investments and continue to you know add employees uh, which would be needed for uh, the growth in the business. Uh, on the overall basis, we expect our margins to remain stable at 20 to 30 percent for the next two three quarters every time we continue to be in the growth investment phase okay uh, and i i also wanted to ask a bit about uh, busy uh, so uh, you know busy has shown a uh, you know a good margin uh, so how should we see the growth for this uh, business going forward uh, and have you started seeing any benefit uh, you know, because of the integration, cross-selling, etc., uh, you know, which will aid growth or margin. So, Pranav, as I mentioned, uh, you know, the focus in Q1 for us has been that uh, given that acquisition causes anxiety amongst people, amongst the partner networks, and we also need to, you know, go ahead and strengthen the basic financial systems, our focus essentially has been on doing that well. Uh, and as I said, we've, we've come out fairly well. We should be able to, uh, you know, start focusing on building up the sales team in Q2 uh, and then start to build up on the partner network, uh, you know, in Q3. And I think these two quarters, Q3, Q, uh, Q2, Q3 put together, I think should give us a very good view on how the business will uh, move going forward. We should be able to come back to you with uh, a lot more clarity once we've sailed through this initial period uh, where it is important to ensure that the acquisition and this whole transition actually happens very well. Okay, sure. Uh, thank you. Wish you all the very best. I'll come back next time. Thank, thank you, Pranav. A reminder to all the participants that you may use raise hand option on your screen if you wish to ask question. And please accept the invite to come on stage and ask the question. Yeah. Yeah, Abhishek, you can go ahead now. Uh, hi, this is Abhishek Manaji from ISEC. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, really sorry, I couldn't hear your explanation on the cost side. Are you saying that manpower cost and outsource sales cost are going to be in the same, uh, I mean, uh, are, are they going to be continuing the same trajectory going ahead? Yeah, so what I said was that the manpower cost and the outsourcing cost, both of them will grow in line with our overall uh, customer growth. So what we are anticipating is that as we are continue to invest in this growth, for the next uh, two, three quarters, our overall market will remain pretty stable to where they are. And after that, they will start showing some Okay, so for the next two three quarters, they should remain elevated, 
and then it will be uh, in language revenues. Uh, yeah, and, if, if, uh, you are comparing, if you are comparing them with the previous year, then obviously, yes, yeah. they will remain elevated. Uh, but if you are comparing them from Q on Q level, I think uh, as the revenue growth uh, is now uh, on a standalone basis at India Mart, is about uh, 5-6% Q on Q. Uh, I would say that similar uh, increase you should in, uh, assume in the manpower cost and the uh, sales cost. So, so that uh, we will maintain about similar 30% EBITDA margin. Got it. So, uh, do you share any numbers on average order values that your paying customers are seeing? Because I saw a slide on ROI uh, for you. Uh, can you share any metrics on the ROI that a paying subscriber is making on your uh, platform? Yeah, I think uh, many quarters ago I had shared some, some data around this. Uh, average order value, because uh, India Mart is a horizontal platform, is, is very difficult to say average, but uh, because there are clothing, there are uh, machinery, and there are uh, cranes, and there are raw materials. However, uh, whatever little uh, information that we get from our own survey, uh, we uh, we get to see anywhere between five hundred dollars to thousand dollar average order value. Uh, our own payment platform, Pay with India Mart, where uh, uh, people use that for smaller orders. Uh, remote orders because for larger orders they typically do not use a payment gateway kind of a system. There we see an average order value of about 25,000 rupees. However, the larger orders are not processed through the pay, pay with India Mart. Uh, as against this, uh, in certain uh, reports I had read that average order value on Amazon is about 13, 14 dollars versus the average order on uh, Udan was about uh, 60 to 75 dollars. So uh, our average order value would range almost 10x of that. And in terms of ROI, ROI is calculated based upon the uh, number of ROI being delivered uh, per customer. And, uh, so I'm going to interrupt Dinesh ji again. Uh, your voice is breaking up. So maybe let's take a moment. I'm sorry, some internet uh, intermittent internet problem is happening. So now it's much clearer. It's better than it's much you can go ahead. Yeah. So uh, uh, I was saying that uh, that in terms of uh, number of inquiries per customer and the conversion and the uh, average order value uh, for that industry. Uh, all together will define the overall ROI for the customer. Uh, in in general, generally we have seen that in the last four or five years, our number of inquiries have gone multifold up as compared to the number of customers. Uh, so the inquiries per customer is already uh, uh, at a quite uh, healthy number, and that we are that is why we are also uh, trying to work more on the relevancy side. So that the relevancy led improvement can happen. Uh, in in different uh, industry segments, the order value is different. And typically, customer, customers are able to convert anywhere between 5% to 15% of the inquiries that they receive. Okay, that's pretty helpful. Your uh, platinum subscriber, right? Uh, is, is there any commission based charges that you uh, I mean, charge? Sorry, can you repeat your question? Your voice had broken off in between. Oh, so, so for your uh, premium customers, say platinum customers, I saw that uh, the average uh, uh, charges that you're getting from the average reader. From them was in the range of 7.2 right? So I'm guessing that is not oh sorry, 7.9 So I'm guessing that is not a one-time subscription charge, right? 
Is there a permission that you charge them? Sorry, Sorry you you why, uh, your question is still not uh, you know clear. Uh, I think uh, this. Yeah, I think question. Yeah, I do that. I read it. Just I just type it in the question box. So Ravi, just uh, read out the question whatever he types in. Okay. Right. So moving on then. The so next question, Anmol Gurg, please go ahead with your question. Please unmute your line. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. So just had a couple of questions. Firstly, we added some 226 employees in product and tech uh, this quarter. Will it be entirely related to busy infotech or we have also increased the intensity of our uh, tech hiring? That's uh, one. And secondly, wanted to uh, have a view on margins that uh, we are giving an estimate of adding eight to 9,000 uh, paid suppliers every quarter. So just wanted to um, understand that uh, our sales and uh, like you said, that our sales and uh, employee cost will increase in uh, that manner. However, can we expect any advertisement revenue also coming through into the company uh, to increase our traffic uh, share uh, and can that impact our margins as well in the next year or uh, going ahead as well? So that that are the two questions from my end. Let's first talk about the product and sorry, sorry, Dinesh Ji, your voice is not audible uh, once again. Is it any better now? Uh, it's it's much better. Let's start once again. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, first, talking okay. about the product and technology employees. Uh, in the last two years, we haven't uh, hired any product and technology employees, and uh, we had given offers uh, to the campus uh, in this entire last year, and uh, people had started to join uh, as a trainee. From January, and most of these people uh, they completed their examination and became permanent uh, in this particular quarter. And that's why you are seeing a uh, step function jump in the employee count. Uh, so we have actually beefed up our uh, product and tech team, uh, knowing that uh, the market is going to be tough for product and tech. Uh, we need more people. We have expanded uh, multifold into uh, different products, as you can see. Our CRM has become quite mainstream and uh, we are also trying to do experiments around uh, various uh, more engagement features on the relevancy improvement, category based uh, improvement as well as uh, going, trying to uh, experiment more on the payment and credit side. On the busy also I think uh, 180 total employees have been added. There are total 181 as of uh, 30th June. Hmm. Uh, but uh, the entire of product and tech that team that you see here is on account of people who join in the This is not on account of people at least. Uh, the second question was around the margin. So, uh, yes, I think, uh, people will Sorry, Dinesh Ji, not, 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 not even. Sorry to interrupt once again. So maybe you can now start uh, answering the second question, please. Yeah, the second question was around margins. So as I, uh, as we guided that uh, margins will remain in the range of 30 odd percent. Uh, as we are adding these new customers, these new customers are added at the lowest ARPU uh, in the entry level segment of the silver company as well. As these customers uh, move up the uh, value chain, over the year or so, that will improve the margin. So, as the customer base increases, the margin particularly are uh, lower. As the customer moves up, becomes older, uh, then the margins improve. And you can see the top 10% uh, uh, customers' ARPU is around 220k, and top 1% customers' ARPU is around 790k. Uh, however, the overall ARPU is about 46k, uh, while the silver monthly ARPU is about 2.5 thousand per month, per month, which is about 30,000. Um, sure, sir. So, uh, just a follow-up on that. Uh, just wanted to understand that can we 
um, uh, expect uh, uh, India Mart to spend more on advertisement as well in coming years? Yeah, um, uh, as we have always guided, if at all uh, we decide to do any advertisement, it will be to the tune of uh, you know uh, 30, 40 crore rupees uh, per annum. However, uh, we we feel that uh, last couple of years there has been more buyers uh, than uh, sellers. Uh, we are uh, trying to build more supply on the platform, uh, more uh, responsive supply, more. Uh, uh, <coughs> So I think uh, current year or so, uh, we don't plan to spend anything on the uh, brand building advertising for buyer acquisition. Our 100% buyer acquisition remains organic and we believe that uh, it will remain so for the next year or so. Uh, if at all uh, there are any advertising plan, we'll let you know in advance. Sure. Uh, thanks for the talk. Thank you, Anmol. Next question is from the line of Ratik Gupta, Guardian Asset Management. Ratik, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, so my first question is on the supplier front. So although we are seeing a 10,000 increase in the supplier front for the uh, this quarter, so do we have a number if we have lost any? Lost? Yes, so uh, you know, if you are asking about the churn, we, 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 we give the churn numbers uh, uh, quite frequently in every call. Uh, the uh, top uh, gold and platinum customers, the churn remains uh, less than 10% uh, uh, per annum. In the silver annual uh, segment, the churn remains around 25% per annum. And uh, in the segment, uh, the churn uh, Sorry, sir, your voice is breaking out. The, as I said, the churn uh, in the plat gold and platinum segment, the churn remains at uh, less than 10 percent per annum. In the silver annual segment, the churn becomes about uh, 20 to 25 percent per annum. And in the silver monthly segment, the churn is about uh, 5 percent per month. Okay. Uh, and my second question is, sir, uh, uh, on the current scenario, what we see is that the focus has been towards the manufacturing sector and the product sector. So are we looking forward to move towards the service sector as well as India Mart service? Yeah, I mean, on a large macro side, uh, dividing that into manufacturing, or I think we many, many service providers are our customers also. Uh, we go by uh, small category by category, so business services, construction services, uh, uh, that kind of it. And uh, I, I think we continue to expand into more and more categories uh, to monetize better. And we will continue to do that. But uh, uh, are we going to go into B2C services? Uh, I don't think so. We will continue to remain B2B services. Uh, not specifically to B2B or B2C, sir. I am talking about the services, uh, the service segment sector. Uh, as we are focused towards the manufacturing sector like industrial plants, machinery or the construction or the machinery parts, uh, are we focusing on the service segments as well? The supposedly IT services or the financial services segment? Yeah, not much on IT services and financial services, but you will see software, uh, um, many, many software companies, you will see many call center companies, you will also see many uh, consultants, you will see many chartered accountants and uh, logistics service providers, uh, transportation, that kind of services. Okay, yeah, that was my question. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ratik. Next question is from the line of Amit Chandra, HDFC Securities. Amit, please go ahead. Amit, um, please hi. unmute. Yeah. Hi. yeah, yeah. I'm audible now. Yeah. Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. So, so my first question is on the, uh, you know, on the customer addition that is mostly on the, you know, mostly on the monthly, uh, you know, like subscribers. So, what percentage of the monthly subscribers get converted to maybe a long-term engagement with us? So, if you can provide some colors uh, on that, uh, whether uh, how many of them that we uh, add uh, that remain with us because you have mentioned that the churn is coming down. 
So, you know, you know, like what kind of impact is it going to have in, on our ARPUs over a, over, a, you know, over a longer period of time? And also, in terms of uh, the addition that in, if I see the incremental ARPU, that is obviously on the lower side. So obviously, are we providing some kind of some kind of discounts to you know get uh, you know suppliers on our platform, or the pricing remains the same? So first, let me answer the uh, easier one first on the long term ARPU growth. Uh, on the long term ARPU growth, uh, we have we have guided in the past also. Typically, we try to. Uh, take anywhere between 5 to 6 percent CAGR R2 group. And uh, that has been the past also, and that will remain similarly. Uh, uh, yeah. that, that yes, you are right, that many of these, uh, first of all, about two thirds of customer comes in the monthly mode, and one third of the customer comes in the annual mode. And uh, from the uh, silver uh, customers, Many customers upgrade to the gold and uh, uh, platinum over a period of time. Uh, approximately, uh, I know for sure that approximately 20% of the customers typically upgrade in a year's time. Uh, so if you look at the cohort wise, uh, such customers will upgrade in the second month, third month, and so on. So approximately 20% in the uh, uh, years period, and that is how the ARPUs increase over a period of time. And uh, yeah, and currently, currently, because of the most political tradition is going to happen on the silver side. So, uh, in the near term, ARPUs will remain, uh, you know, flattish or even uh, could be even. Uh, muted for some time, but uh, over a long period of time, uh, they will increase by way of upsell and by way of uh, upgrades. On the, uh, uh, are we are we giving discounts? I think that there are no uh, on the silver side. We don't uh, offer much discount in a fixed price product. When it comes to the uh, platinum side, we definitely uh, offer customized packages. Uh, for larger customers. Sorry to interrupt, Amit. Uh, your voice is not uh, audible. Uh, you know, then, in terms of commissions, uh, how the commissions are there? Is it mostly. Amit, can you repeat your questions, please? Audible volumes. Hello. Maybe Amit, you can turn off your camera. It will save some bandwidth Hello. and uh, repeat your question then. I'm audible. Yeah, it's yeah, you're audible. Yeah. So, uh, no, my so my question is on the channel partners. So, you know, uh, how the channel partner economics actually work? Uh, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of commissions that we're giving to channel partners, because you know what I'm seeing is that. Uh, you know, uh, as you mentioned, that the cost will actually go up uh, in line with uh, you know the supply addition. So, is it uh, that most of the sales that is coming, or sales uh, like I mean, in terms of customer additions that is coming, is mostly through the channel partner ecosystem, or our in-house sales is also adding. Uh, you know, so yeah, as I said earlier. About 50%, more than 50% of the sales currently come to, uh, from in-house uh, sales channel. And our endeavor is to uh, keep it at 50-50%. And uh, the, the cost uh, on the employee front will rise because our cumulative customer base is increasing. And we need uh, client servicing and uh, uh, renewal and upsell employees. And those are 100% uh, in-house employees. We have not yet tried the uh, channel partner there. Uh, we will probably uh, start to think about those, uh, in, uh, especially in the tier 3 towns. And how the commission works is a very, uh, like, like very standard DST mechanism, which you see in the uh, banking sector or which you see in the telecom sector. Uh, it's like, uh, based upon whatever is the cost and uh, whatever 
Sorry, Dinesh, your voice is breaking up. So, uh, the commission on the sales is uh, to the general partners or uh, per, per sale basis and is uh, arrived at uh, based upon the historical cost uh, we have had at EMR. Alright, so I think Amit have left. So, we will move on to the next participant. Uh, Manish Gupta from Solidarity Advisors. Please go ahead, Manish. Yes, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm coming back to a question other participants have also raised. You know, you made a statement, I hope I've understood that right, that employee cost will stay roughly proportionate to uh, how your revenue increases. That's kind of, you know, very counterintuitive because of two reasons. One is, uh, one would expect that there would be some uh, productivity of the sales force over time. And secondly, you know, you do mention that people come in in the lower tier and then they upgrade, uh, they upgrade to higher uh, revenue per supplier as they move into the gold and the silver, the silver and the gold and the platinum programs. So it's very counterintuitive why your employee to revenue ratio just for the standalone business should not decline over time. Yeah, see, uh, can you see the current slide on the, uh, uh, up there? Yeah. So, on a long term basis, you are right. On a long term basis, uh, Sorry, Dinesh, I can't hear you. Dinesh, it's a very bad line. Uh, one request is just to see whether this is an issue of bandwidth or it's an issue of the software platform you're using. Because this is really a terrible line, you know. This one has been barely able to understand anything on this call. Are we audible now? Yes, yes, it's audible now. This is bandwidth issue. We have we have used the new conference room. I think that that there is something wrong with that. So yes, uh, if you can see the slide uh, on a long on a long term basis, the margins will uh, improve and they have been improving. It is only in the last two years where uh, the margins have gone uh, exceptional. Not Sorry to interrupt the SG. It's a, it's a very bad line. Uh, not able to hear you at all. The problem is not uh, my voice. Yeah, no, Dinesh. I think it's just the conference room that you were uh, May I offer a suggestion that we reschedule this call uh, because you know we get to talk to you only once a quarter. And I think there were some very interesting questions that people asked. So if it's not too much of a bother, Dinesh, could we reschedule the call and do it again? Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it we'll, uh, internally and see if... Uh, yeah, otherwise, I'm happy to do a call offline with Pratik or something. Yeah, so, that's... Just uh, as that, I understand, that's you. Yeah, uh, what I heard you say was that over time, the uh, the, the reduction in employee benefits, we should continue to see that over time. Is that what you said? Yes, only for the next two quarters or so, it will not, it will grow in line with revenue. Okay, clear. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so we'll move on to the next participant then. Amit, are you there? Uh, Hello. Yeah. Can you... Yes, Amit, we can hear. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, sir. So, uh, no, uh, actually, actually, my line got lost. So, yeah. on the cost part of it, of questions have been uh, you know asked on the cost aspect. But uh, if I so the adjusted EBITDA margins that you are given, so that is excluding the ESOP cost. Uh, uh, no, uh, if I'm not wrong, and uh, you know if I exclude the ESOP cost and if I exclude uh, you uh, know the acquisition impact. Then the margins uh, come to around uh, you know 33 percent, right? So what we are saying here is that uh, the investment that we're planning and we are targeting 30 percent margin because the you know, margins of like busy is on the higher side, right? Uh, so uh, typically it should have a you know uh, you know like positive impact on the margins. So how do we see the cost aspect uh, and and also the ESOP cost? Uh, I know what would the ESOP cost for the full year? 
if you can give that and also on a you know, stand alone basis how the you know, cost will move up or it will be st you know, stable at these levels sure so uh, one platform that we have said about 30% margin that was on the EBITDA and not adjusted EBITDA and that was actually including the uh, stock comp expense. But you can tell what is the ESOP. Uh, Regarding the ESOP uh, prediction or uh, as to how do we see this cost. So this cost is primarily on account of uh, the uh, ESOP that we put in the month of January. So for first year, this cost will stay high. Over the next two, three quarters, it will stay high. And after that, uh, depending upon the amortization schedule, it will come down slightly. If the seventh row is uh, third quarter, we continue on it. Next three quarters. Okay. And uh, my last question is on the busy side. I know busy is a very new and very small business as compared to the overall uh, business. <laughs> and we, we will make uh, investments in uh, product and technology and sales. So busy, uh, while you are seeing the current uh, profitability as 40-50%, I think uh, our immediate target on busy is not about, uh, you know, margins, but about expanding the sales and uh, making the product uh, available on mobile and cloud and all those things. So I would say that uh, that 5 crore rupees would not have a larger impact on the uh, operating margin on the consolidated basis. Yeah, yeah. Now, so again on on the on the busy side, sir. So uh, obviously, you know, uh, the run rate that we are you know, showing it's indicating around forty crores, like full year uh, for the for the next year. But when we acquired, also the revenue was actually higher. So are we are we seeing a you know why wide kind of a decline for busy or there is some accounting changes that impacting that and uh, or in terms of how we are. Uh, recognizing the revenue for busy and also in terms of longer term like, targets uh, you know how do you see uh, uh, the like revenue growth for busy and uh, you know in terms of cross sell uh, you know how the opportunity is panning out Tommy, two things uh, one uh, we earlier we financials uh, if you will see were based upon IAC from this quarter onwards we have shifted to in the S and therefore, uh, the whole policy of revenue recognition is now as per India's and not idea. When you look at a comparable number, for last year, I think I was... Sorry to interrupt you, uh, Bridges. Uh, let's just wait for a uh, few seconds. Uh, sure. The line is really bad. We're not able to hear you. So, uh, most of the answers, we're not able to hear you. Uh, maybe maybe try Bridges now. Correct. Is, is it better now, Ravi? Better, better. Please go ahead. So, Amit, uh, on a uh, you know like to like comparison basis, uh, if you look at last year, uh, the revenues were based upon the billing. The billing in Q1 is at 13 crores, which means it will be at a run rate of about 52 crores higher than the revenues which were there last year. Now, having said this, uh, you know, when we look at the uh, focus that we are having on the busy business, as I mentioned, the, the first focus is to make sure that the people and the partners, uh, right, they continue to stick with the business uh, and do not get alarmed by this uh, change in management that has happened. Uh, we would be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, start focusing on growth uh, from Q2, Q3 onwards as we start to invest behind growing the team and growing the partner network. In the last call, we had mentioned that the uh, priorities uh, uh, in this year would be one to double the rate of growth. Uh, I generally used to be about 10-12% to about 20 to 25% uh, in this uh, financial year. So just just a minute huh? so could you could you just repeat the last statement yeah. so as we had shared in the last quarter uh, our uh, you know top three priorities in this financial year would be one uh, to double the rate of 
growth uh, you know from the erstwhile 10 12 percent to about 20 25 percent uh, in this financial year second uh, is to uh, increase the overall number of new licenses which are being sold uh, you know because that that would be forming the foundation for accelerated growth in the years to come and third would be to go ahead and invest behind uh, building the team and improving the overall awareness of the product so that we can ensure better penetration in markets all across India. So these would be the three priorities in this financial year for us. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you and uh, all the best for the uh, financial year. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Next question is from the line of Ajay Modi, Piper Sarkar advisor. Ajay, please go ahead. Thank you, Ravi. Uh, uh, Pratik uh, and uh, Dinesh, quick question. Uh, so, are we saying that our quarterly employee plus outsourced manpower uh, expense run rate is, uh, which is now roughly about 120 or crores, will go higher further? Uh, so, that's my first question. Yes, uh, as we as we discussed in the past, that uh, since we are uh, adding mind powers across, this cost will be So sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt once again. So let's wait for you know five seconds or so. Uh, uh, no, no. Is there an option if you can move my audio instead of uh, video? No, you can try and turn off your video, uh, Kushal. Maybe try turn off your video and let's see if it is uh, better. Yeah, we've switched off our video and we'll continue with the presentation. I think it's better. Let's yeah, uh, let's go. Yeah. yeah, I can. Maybe is this better? Yeah, it's better. Well, Kushal, your uh, presentation it's not visible uh, at the moment. So if you can just share your one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Yeah, is it visible a, now? Presentation visible now. Visible now. Yeah. Thank you. Please go ahead. Okay. So coming back to the question on the employee front, as we discussed the uh, recent right now, that we will continue to add people, and as the people will get added, this cost will increase. However, as a percentage of revenues, it's likely to stay same because the revenues will also grow quarter on quarter. Understood. Uh, but uh, then, then uh, Pratik and I think Dinesh ji can come in here. Uh, so our expenses, which were largely uh, flat, we did not do any large uh, hiring, didn't increase team size back in 2020 and 2021, uh, which we've started doing now. My, my question uh, here is, uh, shouldn't we be sweating these uh, these employees more shouldn't the growth rate be higher i mean for example you just said that uh, uh, target is to do 25% kind of ir uh, irr for or cgr for uh, busy uh, but uh, for a 40 crore sales 25% is growth is about 10 crores which is way too small for a company of our size right uh, so what my understanding that i am trying to seek here is uh, what is stopping us from higher growth right now? We are at 179,000 active users in the India Mart platform compared to 7.2 million uh, uh, storefronts, which is roughly about two per two and a half percent paid to overall subscribers. So what is, I mean, we, if we have money, if we are spending, if we are hiring, what is stopping us from saying that, look, I will drop my ARPUs lower and I will increase my subscriptions far, far, far higher. I mean, we are the market leaders. So why are we not cleaning out this market completely? So uh, let, let's look at the leading indicators of the growth. So there are two leading indicators of the growth. One is the number of customers and the second is the uh, collections in the uh, uh, so if you if you look at uh, FY21, FY21 we neither added customers nor added any collection. So uh, if you look at the collection of FY21 versus FY20, it was a flat collection, 
and if you look at the number of paying subscribers, it was a flat uh, year. In the FY22 also, the first half was uh, marred by uh, COVID. It is only whatever growth has happened, happened in the second half of the uh, year. Now, if you look at the current trend, so from uh, we have tried to double our customer growth from 20,000, 22,000 per annum. Now we are saying that we will go to 35,000 uh, odd per annum uh, at about 8,000 to 9,000 customers per quarter. So I think we are investing behind growth. Now, why can't we go uh, even higher? Uh, that limits my ability to manage. Uh, and as we uh, and to people's adoption of internet uh, and businesses adoption, I think we we remain uh, committed to a profitable growth business. Uh, as we said earlier, so uh, even before the pandemic, uh, our revenues used to grow at 25-30 percent, cost used to grow at 15 to 20 percent, and that is what resulted into margin expansion. I think for now. Uh, given that we have not uh, done any investment in, in the last two years, uh, currently the uh, margins will remain uh, flat at around 30%. However, uh, as we uh, achieve a higher trajectory, uh, we will again start to focus on margin expansion. Understood. Uh, quickly, uh, Dinesh ji, uh, so you said that uh, why can't we go higher? That limits your ability to manage. Uh, my question is that, uh, look, for example, we acquired Busy. Busy has a revenue of what, 40 crores. I mean, uh, for doing a 25% growth, uh, 10 crores doesn't even move the needle for India Mart as a platform. Uh, specifically for Busy, why are, uh, I mean, uh, at what point would we expect a little more aggressive growth here? As I mentioned, uh, we would be able to come back with uh, you know much better view on the overall uh, busy business uh, from next year onwards because we would have seen through this entire time of uh, integration and assimilation of people and partners. And we will build visibility uh, on acquisitions and revenue growth going forward. Okay, I understand. I've already repeated yeah. this multiple times uh, during the busy acquisition process itself. That first year, my entire uh, focus would be to make sure that we do not go burst with the acquisition. You know, uh, so I think the most important factor is that this year, uh, let us focus on retaining the revenue, retaining the employee, retaining the partners, retaining the customers, uh, understanding the business inside out. And then next year onwards, let's uh, put the uh, focus on growth. So then if I were to ask you, uh, what is a three or a five year view with this business? I mean, what size can, uh, should it become? Not can, but what size should it become? I have given a long term uh, my own expectation that over a period of time, over the next uh, 10 years, can this become a 500 crore business instead of a 50 crore business. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay. Uh, next question is from the line of Vivekanand. Vivekanand, do you have a follow up question? Uh, yes, Ravi, I have two follow ups. So, one is on the investments. Um, there are several startups where uh, India Mart's stake is less than 20%, like uh, M1 Exchange or Bizom. Um, so, uh, do you see an opportunity to increase your stake in these companies anytime soon? Also, in the next 12 to 18 months, how do you envisage the utilization of cash? Will there be any major uh, new investments or material follow on rounds that you expect? Second question is on the, the shift to weekly salary payout. Uh, is that having any but uh, bearing on attrition? Uh, is there anything else to call out in terms of attrition? Thank you. So on the weekly uh, salary, it has been uh, received very well. And uh, I believe that the kind of uh, you know, things that we are listening in the market uh, about attrition, we are not uh, that badly affected, but uh, you know, I don't think this, 
this can be the only reason for so maybe we uh, if our addition uh, if we had a monthly salary the addition would have been 1% higher uh, so i think everything adds up to the addition on the minority investment side you are right that uh, we wanted most of the investments to be around 26% Uh, in many cases, uh, we uh, found we probably had either uh, found it uh, too early to go 26 percent, or uh, uh, the availability to be less than uh, 25-26 percent. And uh, so, in the zoom over the time, we have increased our share. In uh, Vyapar also, we started with 26. Now we are at 27.5. Uh, in Logistify also, we started with 10-11 uh, percent. Now we are at 15 percent. Uh, so as and when uh, we continue to assess businesses, and as and when there are any uh, things, we will continue to uh, yeah, we will continue to uh, look for opportunities to increase our size. In nine out of the fourteen investments that you see here are uh, are about twenty five percent or more. Uh, about specifically about M one exchange. Uh, it's an RBI controlled uh, uh, regulated entity and no single uh, entity can take more than 10% uh, being a uh, RBI controlled uh, uh, banking exchange. So we are only allowed to take up to 10% uh, there. We are already have 7.7 and as and when we will find the opportunity, we will increase it to 9.9%. Uh, Uh, okay, thank you. Just one last follow-up. Um, any any updates on Vyapar and, and how the uptake has been and how you are thinking about it uh, now alongside uh, Busy? Both, both operate in a very different segment. Uh, while Busy operates uh, at more of a small and medium businesses, Vyapar operates mostly at a micro and uh, small businesses. Uh, Vyapar uh, uh, less than 50% of the Vapar customers are GST registered businesses. Uh, in uh, Busy, I think more than 80% or 90% customers are uh, GST registered and not only GST registered but I think uh, with good turnover. So, uh, Vapar and Busy actually uh, solving very different needs for very different customer segments. Uh, Busy probably is more uh, to do with tally uh, kind of a Market, whereas Vapar is uh, very self uh, self accounting software or DIY accounting software. All right, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to next participant, Ajay Modi. Do you have a follow up question? Yeah, I uh, uh, thanks, Ravi. Uh, Tineshi, a uh, quick one. Uh, we have a very large exposure now to accounting. We have life, life keeping, real books, busy, and vyapar. Uh, can you just uh, throw some light on uh, what is what is your long term thought process with uh, uh, these uh, all these? And uh, while I understand which pieces of uh, the puzzle do they fit in, uh, what are we looking at from a, a Longer term. I mean, what is the opportunity size that we're looking at? So, opportunity size. Uh, if you look at today's uh, today's market, about uh, about two thousand crore is uh, uh, what the customer pays. About one thousand crore is what uh, the company's uh, revenues are because. Most of the companies uh, have been working on box model, uh, box license model, and on the transfer pricing model. So, from the customer side, uh, the uh, and, and I'm not talking SAP and other, uh, you know, only the uh, small business accounting. Uh, so that's about uh, two thousand crore rupees market, and this market has grown rapidly in the uh, after uh, GST. Uh, in the year GST year, this market actually tripled uh, from being at a 300 400 crore market to 2000 crore. And ever since then, it has been you know uh, growing. And now, with mobile and cloud, uh, we believe that this market can uh, become a billion dollar market over the next 10 years or so. Out of that, uh, 
uh, if you look at uh, major market share has been with tally and tally has been primarily an accountant led uh, desktop only accounting software uh, that our our take is that that is going to change uh, vapar uh, came from uh, a mobile only and diy accounting and now slowly and slowly started to offer a hybrid cloud onto uh, uh, onto desktop as well as mobile uh, real books is a multi branch multi location uh, simultaneous accounting system uh, busy uh, though it, uh, it has a historically box based uh, pure desktop model but i think our vision is to convert that over a period of time into a mobile and uh, uh, multi location uh, cloud based uh, model so we believe that this is a good uh, and it in any way uh, it has all the good fit, good good business models like stickiness customer stickiness is there uh, it has a recurring revenue uh, stream uh, earlier it was in the in the name of amc uh, or upgrades now i think over a period of time as we uh, we have seen most of the software is moving into a recurring revenue system so i think we are uh, we are looking at currently 1 million businesses are within india mart ecosystem are using uh, our software so vapar is being used by almost half a million people uh, busy is being used by 3 uh, 3 lakh licenses have been sold uh, many many people have two three uh, firms being operated on the same license and similarly uh, tally tally as per published resources are about 5 million uh, users on tally so i think this market is going to only grow uh, it's been there for almost 50 years now this market is going to grow only but have we uh, i mean are we already seeing the kind of adaptation uh, here as in uh, from a uh, expert point of view Uh, what you what you would have expected in terms of adoption yeah. are you seeing that already so in the vapar when we first saw vapar in the year of um, you know somewhere in the middle of 2019 it had less than 10000 customers now we are uh, uh, just 3 years uh, from then uh, you know it is july 19 versus july uh, 22 there are already 120000 odd customers so they have added 1 lakh plus customers in 3 years okay okay uh, that's all from my side thank you thank you ajay uh, so i'll now read out a couple of questions from the discussion panel so first question is uh, do you charge commission as a percentage of sales from your platinum subscribers Uh, to understand the arpu of seven point like subscribers. No, we don't. Okay. And now moving on to the next question: What is the registered supplier versus paid supplier ratio, and what is your current conversion rate from the free supplier to the paid supplier? Uh, so about two uh, lakh, one uh, lakh seventy thousand. paid customer and about 70 lakh uh, free customer so that makes about uh, 2.5% uh, of the of the customer base which is paid so you know if you look at uh, worldwide uh, classifieds they typically have anywhere between 2 to 5% penetration uh, whether you look at alibaba or whether you look at uh, many other uh, you know 2 to 5% penetration Uh, in our case being b2b in certain uh, we 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 look at gst data uh, out of the gst data uh, about 12 million uh, people uh, there are about uh, <coughs> there should be about more than a million possible customer base over a long period of time okay uh, so just a follow up sir on this uh what would be the strategic focus area or how do you plan to improve this con- uh, you know conversion uh you know apart from advertising what would be the key drivers to improve this conversion rate we continue to expand uh, uh, you know make it easier for people to do uh, diy as well as continue to expand our uh, touch points 
whether it is online, telephone based or field based or now we have expanded uh, through channels also. So we will continue to do that. Uh, uh, I would say uh, one of the most important factors in uh, this free to paid conversion is people uh, people's own ability to uh, take out uh, take out value from an internet based business. Uh, there are within the same category, within the same geography, there are some people in the same geography, same industry are able to take out better value from India Mart and some people are not because uh, of the way they uh, uh, they, are, they are adopted to internet and as and when uh, more and more people are adopting, more and more businesses are adopting, that is also uh, going to improve over a period of time. Uh, we have seen uh, it's been only 5-7 years when uh, this mobile phone has become uh, quite popular and I think uh, it will continue to improve over a period of time. Thank you very much sir. So maybe and now I would like to hand over the call to you, you know, for the closing remarks. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining our quarter uh, one FY23 conference call. Uh, I'm sorry about the uh, internet disturbance that we we have had. Uh, in case you have more queries, uh, please feel free to reach out to our uh, uh, investor relations department, and they will be happy to answer your queries uh, one on one. Uh, and uh, we will try to have a better connectivity, tested connectivity next time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a great day and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all the participants. On behalf of India Mart, we now conclude this webinar. Thank you. You may disconnect your lines now.